Voices of Defiance podcast number 36 and a half, recorded on Saturday, July 11th, 2015. Hey, I'm Cody from Unqualified Gamers, a podcast member of the Gunna Geek Network, just like the one you're listening to right now. The opinions expressed are those of each individual. Check out other podcasts at GunnaGeekNetwork.com and get ready because geekiness begins in 3, 2, 1... Welcome to Voices of Defiance. It's a podcast about sci-fi's television show Defiance and all of its universes to include, but not limited to, the video game. We're not experts, just a few fans like yourself that love the show and want to geek out about it. If you haven't caught up to the latest aired episode, you might want to pause right now and go catch up, since there will be spoilers. You have been warned. And now, let's have some fun and get on with the podcast. It's OMEC Happy Place time! Hello, I'm your host of Voices of Defiance, Stargate Pioneer, and with me is the woman who just can't let go of that Defiance money. Her name is Shannon. Hello. Hello. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, that's you. Oh, I thought he was. Never mind. <laughs> My and, hello. And obviously, in addition to Shannon, we also have Sean, the man who needs no introduction because he's the artsy one. Artsy. I, and in preparation for today, because today's a special day, I am wearing a purple banana hammock. Uh, <laughs> oh, so I'm, uh, I'm all. Please don't. I'm all ready. By definition, that is pantsless podcasting. So we're good. And this is a very special episode. Your very special episode of Voices Defiance today. Not like after school, very special episode <laughs> where Nancy learns about venereal disease. I mean, this is actual special. Although we probably should have talked about that. I mean, like Votan VD, I mean, I'm sure she would have known about it. A lot of swapping paint. So I mean, there's some, some germs. Oh, can you imagine if you got like Castafin scabies or something? <laughs> I mean, oh, <laughs> oh, we had a wonderful chance, a spectacular chance, actually, to talk with Kinsey herself, <laughs> Nicole Galatia. <laughs> Better get the name right. I think I did. Galatia, right? Yeah, he's cheating. We'll tell you why later on. <laughs> I didn't try. I blame him because I'm Texan. I can't do All it. Right. I still call her Kapow. Kapow. Just a reminder, you can go to VoicesOfDefiance.com. You can catch us and all of our contact information there, as well as all of our past episodes. And you can also find us over at GunnaGeek.com. That is our network page. We are part of a vast network of podcasts and bloggers about sci-fi, geeky things, technology. Go catch us out there. Billions and billions of podcasts. Yes. Carl Sagan there. And by now, I think there probably is billions and billions. And we do have a voicemail line, 612-888-ARC-1 or 612-888-2751. Now, we had a chance to talk to Nicole. We set it up and I, you know, this is a little bit of slap on us. We tried to get her on the live podcast, but we screwed up on the date. We met. It to, turned out okay. Yeah. Sorry, it, y'all. <laughs> so we don't have her on live, but we do have about at least 45 minutes of Nicole and, uh, and she. Oh, this is just an amazing interview. Amazing. I just amazing. love talking with her. And now I have a new tutor. So for those of you complaining about how I mispronounce everything, including the word mispronounce. Yeah, exactly. There you go. I did that on purpose. Not so. For those of you complaining, Nicole has offered now to be my tutor. So just listen to the interview here and you will find that out. Is there anything else you'd like to say, Sean or Shannon? Oh, well, there's lots I'd like to say, but I have a prom date and I have to go prepare. You have an art to fix too. Yeah, but we're going to prom first. Okay. I, I give you permission. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Without further ado, we are going to start talking with Nicole, the wonderful actress that plays Kinsey, the Omec of Defiance. Hello. Hey, Nicole. Oh, wow. Awesome. Hi, who's this? This is Stargate Pioneer. Hello. How are you today? Sorry, I'm a little late. Hey, no problem. And then with me, I have Sean and Shannon. Hi, Shannon. Hello. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you this morning? I'm fantastic. I think I have, I hear Shannon and Stargate Pioneer, but no Sean. Oh, I'm still here. How are you doing? Hi, Sean. 
Uh-huh. Believe me, he's here. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't have missed it. <laughs> All right. So hopefully we didn't catch you uh, running around on a Saturday morning, but... I took a, a very quick, impromptu trip to a museum. Oh. <laughs> So, uh, sorry to shave off a couple of minutes off of our time. Oh, no problem. Culture is always more important than we <laughs> are, let me tell you. I expected that I would be back a little earlier than I, I made it back. But uh, as I was racing down the street, I said, oh, I, I need to call someone. Hi. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So, I'm not sure if you've listened to our show yet or not, but we're a weekly podcast when defiance is on the air i listen to you guys all the time sean cracks me up you guys are hilarious (laughs) that's awesome (laughs) i have noticed something that i find quite interesting none of you sean shannon or stargate and no one on voices of defiance can pronounce my name none of you can pronounce my character name or my real name (laughs) so before i help you i would like to hear you guys take a go at it. What's my character name? Oh, hold on. <laughs> it's Kinsey. I got to look it up now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Kinsey. But on an, a previous episode of Voices of Defiance, someone said Kinsey. Someone said it was just a little, the pronunciations were a little weird. Yes, Kinsey. You know, on uh, the closed captioning on the first episode that you were on, it, it spelled it differently. You so, are you're going to claim that you were instructed wrong? Seriously, I, dude? I, I am at this point. In time. <laughs> Blame it on the closed captioning. That's what Absolutely. I Absolutely. Like Cuz I have to watch everything with closed captioning so I can understand what's going on anyway. So that's what I did and then Mainly cuz he's old and he can't hear probably. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I nicknamed her Kapal so I didn't have yes, to. Kapal, exactly. That's all I remember. <laughs> that was my favorite line. I'm surprised that Kapow just made it such a big impact, but I'm happy that it did. Oh my That's god, it was a huge impact. <laughs> I watched that part over and over. Sexy as hell as it was. As was. <laughs> that was my, you know, that was our, um, who's the, uh, my goodness, I can't, I'm such a Trekkie, I can't remember his, his name. Uh, not Captain Picard, who's the original Kirk? head of the Star Kirk. Trek? Kirk. Yeah, Captain Kirk. Kirk. That was, you know, Captain Kirk, he would do it to anyone. Uh, He doesn't care if you're a green alien, if you're a Martian, if you're... So, Nolan is sort of our Captain Kirk. And, just like Captain Kirk, he did it to everyone. (laughs) Yeah. I was going to say, it didn't really matter. Including the girls. I identify with that. (laughs) (laughs) Kinsey's very doable, so it's okay. But, you know, yeah, he sort of gets a go at, at all the aliens and humans alike. Okay, but I'm sorry, uh, you guys are not off the hook yet. Yet, So now I need the pronunciation of my real name. And just so you know, when you're pronouncing my last name, you're also learning your first bit of Kinukaz because my, me- my name means something in, in my alien language. So what do you think Uh-oh. it is? How do you pronounce my last name? Well, I just wa- I, I cheated. I just watched one of your <laughs> recent YouTubes, so... I, I'm going to get it wrong anyway, but it's Nicole Galatia. Oh, dear. No. Okay. I screwed up. <laughs> Any other try? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> They're shamed. Yeah. I was going to say, nope. No. We are, we are chock full of pronouncing everyone's name wrong. So <laughs> Galicia. 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 It's, yeah, it's easy once you, once you hear it. Galicia. Galicia. Gotcha. So Galicia in Kinukaz actually means thank you. Oh, I did not know that. Yes. The lovely David J. Peterson, who is our conlanger, uh-huh. the, the person who creates our languages. It was a fantastic gift that he gave to me. Uh, he, he created, you know, there's Ga, there's Lulz, and there's Sia. And when you put them all together, that those words all mean something separately, but you put them all together and you get Galicia, and it's pronounced exactly like my name. So now you know how to say thank you. So. It's cool. So he incorporated your name into yes. part of the show. I will officially go down in Kinuka's history, and and you have to say my name whenever you're saying. You know, there was no, there was no plea. We're not please and thank you sort of people, the OMAC. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so initially, there was no need to say thank you. <laughs> We're sort of give me and get out of my damn way 
you know, kind of ill. There's a lot of eye rolling last night, last last episode. It was awesome. <laughs> oh, cool. Yes, I, I I gave good eye last night. <laughs> Is that what we're calling it now? All right. <laughs> yeah. So you you will you will need um to brush up on all of your kinukas for next week's episode. It will be kinukas all all hour. Nice. Yes. Looking forward I'm to it. going to claim them. I have just a simple Texas accent. So. <laughs> yeah, Shannon speaks two languages, hick and bad hick. <laughs> I, I, I love a little Texas accent. Woo-hoo. So do I. I married it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, she was the only one who didn't run screaming when I went, would you marry me? <laughs> <laughs> I have my doubts sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you do. It's only been 16 years. <laughs> All right. 16 years. I yeah, know. a little while. What's the secret? She just ignores me, basically. <laughs> I like learned to ignore you. Yeah, <laughs> out of out of a sense of preservation, she ignores me. <laughs> Shake your head, you nod, and keep on going. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Hey, whatever. Yeah. whatever well, it's a little difficult. I can understand that. It's a little difficult to take. She has to live with me, and I can understand that. <laughs> I'm I'm sure you're lovely to live. Yeah, <laughs> he's lovely to go out with him. for like an hour, but after that, he kind of starts to stink up the joint, so. <laughs> yeah, get used to it. <laughs> One girl's stink is another girl's perfume. I told you I'm a trophy husband. You should listen to her. <laughs> See, look at that. I'm perfumey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, as much as a trophy husband you are, I mean, just tell you how much of a happy dance he did when you retweeted him. It, there was a little happy dancing. Yeah. You guys <laughs> are awesome. Thank you for everything you guys do. It's such a fun, uh, it's a fun show. It is. I, yeah. I was unexpectedly barraged by the funness that Defiance has been. So really enjoy all you guys' work on it. It's, it's fun to watch. Defiance season one and season two are great. Defiance season three is spectacular. Wait until you see what we have in store for you. Ooh. Look at her. She's a pro. She knows a thing or two. She's a pro. Look at her working. I'm telling you, I'm getting scared. It scares me sometimes of, of all the killing that's going on this season. I'm like, who's going to survive the end? There are a few murders that take place. I won't deny it. Kinsey now she would never hurt a soul she's a sweet girl um, and as you saw right. from last night mm-hmm. she and her father are very very close she's like, a daddy's cl- clearly. girl clearly I <laughs> see absolutely it's like I said last night I'm, I'm watch- I only got to see half of it I was at work but that's the last part that I saw and I'm like what the what is happening because now we have <laughs> the purple people eaters eating the purple people what's happening yeah yeah <laughs> I remember getting the script for that episode and I called our creator, executive producer, Kevin Murphy up. And I said, you're going to get letters. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to get phone calls, sir. There will be letters written and not all of them will be nice. But, you know, yeah. it's the future. It's, it's, we're going with it. It's alien. It's, okay. it's the future. Absolutely. You know, we're aliens. We don't have your human customs. There you go. We do things a little different. That's right. You're not caught up on the same hangups that we have as humans. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh. I learn everything from my father. But you know, you can't expect you to be living all those years on the ship by yourself without having some kind of entertainment. Well, I needed an outlet. <laughs> <laughs> and just know he raised me. So should I ever act out, I'm my father's daughter. Well, he's also your commander. <laughs> That's true. So now we know who's your daddy. <laughs> I always listen to him, as, as you've seen. Mm-hmm. Well, I, there was a little vote that said, did I destroy the uh, endogene uh, protoform or not? What do you think? Did did Kinsey destroy oh, no. it or no? Absolutely no. not. What, what, what makes you guys so suspicious? Kinsey's loyal and, you know. I'm suspicious of you, too. Kinsey is smart and <laughs> daddy is preoccupied. <laughs> True. I'm pretty sure you will. It has something in place for you guys, too. Doc Yule is very clever. Yes, I will give you that. Yeah, we spoke to Trina. She's a good Canadian. <laughs> She's a very good Canadian. <laughs> I don't know how we survived the brutal Canadian winter. Uh, I loved Canada, but I will go back in, say, March. Because <laughs> oh, no. January and February, I wanted to kill myself. 
Yeah, you're more of a warmer weather girl, right? I am a I'm a tropical I yes, I'm I'm more of a tropical bunny. Uh, I don't, you know, it I was I like that visual. Neg- That's nice. Because there's a lot of bunnies in the tropics. <laughs> it was negative thirty degrees <laughs> yeah. many of the days we were filming outdoors. And oh um God. I don't and that's Celsius. We don't have that number. There's no translation for that in fact. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> never gotten that cold in New York. So I've never had to worry about that. I, I winter in Los Angeles and I summer in New York. So I try not to, you know, I sound fancy, don't I? Yeah. <laughs> I, I try to stay away from the negative anything. I don't see how y'all functioned with the negative 30. Uh, Ooh, we did. How are your lips I, even moving? Uh, first two episodes, I was so preoccupied with watching for who was shivering. And I think everyone did a pretty good job. Did you guys have like thermals on underneath all your stuff? No. Ooh. Well, I, I, well. What's interesting? So on episode one and two, where the Omec landed, I'm wearing my lovely purple landing gear suit with my turban, and it was negative thirty two degrees that day. And underneath it all, I had on a wetsuit, and all <laughs> the wetsuit did was prevent me from going to the Omec toilet because you can't take it all off. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> I, I had to ask permission to go to the bathroom and then three people had to come uh. with me to help me get out of everything. But it's negative 32, so you don't want to get out of anything. No, you don't. Uh, it's okay. I'll hold it. I'll hold it. I'm fine. Much less sit on anything. <laughs> 12 hours. All right, so here's a question I've been dying to ask. So uh, we watched last night's episode, and you see Kinsey come around the corner, and it's a pan from the floor up, and you see you're wearing nothing but like purple fabric, some paint, and a little bit of costume jewelry, and she just kind of <laughs> slinks up to her father. It was the whole jealous of Stama, but I'm not jealous of Stama moment. Does when you come out of the makeup chair, does Kinsey just appear like in in you know the half childlike you know, predator huntress thing, or is that something you consciously like? Okay, Kinsey would do this. You know, there was a lot of thought that goes into it, and but uh, the hair, the makeup, the contacts, my awesome prosthetic teeth, you know, it just makes everything easier. I sort of come to work as Nicole, and somewhere between the third and the eighth layer of purple, I just <laughs> decide I'm going to be Kinsey now. <laughs> yeah, they've learned a little bit with Stama how much makeup that you actually need to put on so it doesn't rub off. Yeah, it's amazing. How many layers do you actually have to wear? When I do my full body, like in my, well, so what I was wearing last night is called my goddess attire. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> so when I'm wearing my goddess attire, two makeup artists, four hours. So I have two people painting me from head to toe. I'm there in my purple panty and my purple bra, and they paint me up until I have to take the purple panty and purple bra off so that they can get to the uh, my other bits. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, you just sort of go to your Omec happy place and let them do what they have to do. <laughs> the rest of us are in our Omec happy place when you walk on set like that. That's that's pretty much how that happens. Oh, yeah. uh, it's, it's appreciated. It, it's, it was fun to walk out onto set the first day and you walk by all the, you know, you know the, it takes a village to create an Omec. But you, so you, <laughs> you, you walk onto set past all the crew, and basically I'm wearing a slither of fabric in the front and the back held on by my armor. So it was an interesting day, but, you know, eventually everyone's like, yeah, that's Kinsey. I can't imagine just being like, get, eh, get over know, it. that's just Kinsey. Well, and this is, and I'm not sure, but this is like one of your, if not the first serious sci-fi stuff you've done, right? Yes, no, for sure. It's my my first sci-fi role. I've always been a huge sci-fi fan, and I was excited. I I like to describe Kinsey as she's my Angelina Jolie character, just dipped in a little purple, just a little paint. I'll roll with that. Yeah, yeah I, I was going to say any any of us was going to roll with that. Yes. That's fine. <laughs> I mean, this is a show with. I, I, I don't know, many, many strong female leads. I mean, you have Stama with Jamie. You've got Amanda. Little Wolf with uh, Stephanie. You've got Amanda. Uh, Did you call her Little Wolf? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I miss it. Yeah, it's fantastic. 
I don't call her anything else but Little Wolf because ever since uh, first season, yeah, first season when she was kind of nicknamed that, I'm like, that's who she is. And, uh, <laughs> that's who she is. Yeah, that's who she's back to this season too. Now, I mean, that's aptly named what she is. Yeah. So I mean, you've got all these strong characters, and then here comes Kinsey and yeah, you in it. third season, and not only hold your own, but stand out in the middle of that. Well, thank you. It is going to be a delicious season. I'll tell you that. It has been. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, the women of defiance are all strong. They're all smart. Uh, we're all a little crafty and manipulative. Um, I would say with, you know, you, you should watch your back with all of them, but you might want to watch your front as well with Kinsey. <laughs> yeah. From the moment she, you see her and you see kind of her jaw dishinge and, and yeah. she's about to, you know, to eat Nolan whole and everything. I'm like, holy crap, who was that? Well, not every, yeah, I mean, I don't, what does your hungry face look like? It's, it's not always cute. Not as sexy as that. Oh, no, it was cute. <laughs> uh, it was, it was, you're working it. You're <laughs> licking his face. You're it's hitting awesome. right up Sean's yeah. alley. Unhinged jaw with a second layer of teeth that, that does it for you. <laughs> you know, I'm fine with that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, that's uh, surprisingly enough. Uh, Kinsey pretty much works for me. That's, uh, I mean, she could take various bits off my anatomy. I'd be fine with that. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Believe me, he is totally fine with that. Yeah, I'm, I, we we weren't kidding. We're Kinsey bait. It's fine, you know. I, I we we definitely need some Kinsey bait T-shirts. That's awesome. Hell yeah! Well, we'll take care of that. <laughs> awesome. We'll get you one. <laughs> I, I made a as a part of a, my rap gift I, that I gave to all of the cast and crew. I uh, you've probably seen pictures of them on site, but online. But I gave t-shirts that on the top said Kinsey Kutemas, which means in my language, it means Kinsey ate me. Yes. <laughs> oh, those are the white t-shirts, right? <laughs> they're purple. Oh, the purple. Maybe I saw a white of one. Of course they're purple. I saw they're a white purple. one. She wouldn't have anything as pedestrian as white. Mm. She's Kinsey. That's right. See, that's Costi colors, you know. <laughs> yeah. Every, everything's purple in my land. Exactly. See, you're a Stama fan. I, I'm Camp Kinsey. I, I am think. a Stama fan. But it's just because I came to the show already being a Jamie fan. So I'm a Stama and a Jamie fan as well, so it's okay. I'm a little bit of a fangirl, so I have to <laughs> keep it calm sometimes. But I came because of Jamie, but I stay because of everything else. All right, so you've mentioned you're a huge sci-fi geek and you're a Trekkie. What drew you to sci-fi and what, what sci-fi did you grow up on? I am Star Trek and a Star Trek Next Generation fan. I was always obsessed with Uhuru. And, mm. you know, there, it's, a, it's just a genre that has been so inclusive of different types of people, Black people, Asian people, Latinas, you know, before any other genre embraced diversity sci-fi did and you know i think as a kid you sort of look for yourself or you look for things that you can relate to but i was and still am to this day madly in love with captain kirk william shatner i don't know how old you are cat daddy but i'm waiting for you somewhere so it's the william <laughs> shatner version not the chris pine huh you know chris pine's all right but william shatner's my cat I, oh, I like she, she'd chew up and spit out Chris Pine. Yeah, <laughs> Seriously. You know, I'd like Chris, to chew up and spit Chris I Pine. Like Chris. Listen, <laughs> man, I, you know, you wouldn't throw Chris Pine out of bed. Chris Pine's off. No. But, hmm. You know, it's something about the original that, that can never be replaced. I can see that. I can see that. Uh, for me, it was it was Beverly Crusher. Uh, mm -hmm. I had I had yeah. a huge thing for Beverly. Yeah. <laughs> I could see your that. Dad call, your dad called her Sugar Hips. Yeah, right? Dr. Sugar Hips. That's what my dad calls Beverly. <laughs> sugar Hips. <laughs> you know, she was the first person I ever met at a convention. Really? Oh, well, fantastic. I was, in my, I was in junior high. So the first time I ever went to a, a, a sci-fi convention is when I met her. Nice. I met Brett Spiner at a convention. I met Michael Dorn at a convention who is, uh, you know, because you expect to meet Michael Dorn and as a kid you grew up with him and it's Worf and he's very much not Worf because he's an actor. I mean, he's a professional and he's very much not Worf. And the first time you meet him and you're, you're like, well, you're not stoic and Klingon-y. You know? <laughs> right. Did you go up to him and speak some Klingon? I tried. Uh, it was not what I expected. And, and of course, there's Star Trek. So, I mean, they are bombarded. I mean, and you're probably used to the same kind of thing now. If you show up at a con, is you know, you're you're going to be Kinsey, and people are going to talk to you about Omex stuff and everything. I don't know if you've done any conning as Kinsey yet, but 
have not yet. You know, we we just started airing, and we're not going. We obviously we're not at Comic Con, so uh, I, what is up with that? I wanted to go. Oh, they so I want to hear people try to speak Kinuk. Yeah. Yeah, we would not be me. You can't pronounce it. I was going to say, it's not going to be us. We can't even pronounce people's names right half the time. But, you know. Just call it Omet. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. You definitely need to come to a con. Uh, I will teach you some words. I always try to tweet out a few a few words. I feel like if I had to learn it, someone else should learn it. <laughs> someone else should suffer People your People can get off your ass and learn it. <laughs> yes, learn a word. Bem, that's father. Madas, that's I love you. It sounds way sexier when you say it, though. It's not that hard. Can't chop it. <laughs> so do you watch other shows, maybe like, Game of Thrones or something like mm-hmm. that, and are interested in the made up language. Love Game of Thrones. Yeah, mm. I did too. Do you get into the languages? I do. You know what? I have to say, I have watched every season of Game of Thrones, and I'm embarrassed to say that it wasn't until I had to learn Kinuk Az that I started. You know, I would just read the subtitles, and now I go when I am watching someone speak Dothraki or High Valerian or or, or whatever. I'm. Like, yes, like they nailed it. Okay, I'm not quite sure if they nailed it, but <laughs> but it's so much work that goes into this language that that I'm I'm set, I'm hell bent on making sure that someone well, learns how to say at least one word to me. It can't David just did be both of them, didn't he? J. Peterson. Hmm? David did both of them, didn't he? Yes, he did. He's cre- he created all the languages on Defiance, and I believe he created all the languages on Game of Thrones as well. I know he created Dothraki. I believe he created the other language that's spoken on on Game of Thrones as well. Basically, the man is just a genius. Uh, I I wonder what he dreams in, like if he, when he just shuts off his brain and everything, if he just wanders in and out of languages. (laughs) <laughs> well, you know, from time to time during shooting, I would text David and because I wanted to ad lib a line in my language because I really thought that, you know, Kinsey's sort of like a diehard extremist and she wouldn't be speaking your stinky human language, although she does speak it fluently. And I would call him from time to time and ask him how to say something in Kinukaz. Like last night when I said, she better be right before I kissed my Ben. Uh, that was something that I ad-libbed. So I said, Luchisu lik evik. And um, who, who on set can correct me? <laughs> <laughs> no one. I don't know if I got it wrong. They're like, hey, did you say the line? Yeah, that's my line in my language. <laughs> <laughs> so if you forget them, you could just start busting it out. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, that was my line. I just thought I'd spice it up a little. Exactly. <laughs> but, I, uh, you know, it takes you so long to, or at least me, I don't know, uh, you know, uh, Tony Curran and Jamie Murray and everyone else on the show who has to speak an alien language. They just, you, like, you it's just so effortless coming out of their mouths. So maybe they look at it one day and they're like, oh, I got it. Me, I'm literally going to sleep with Kinukaz and I was waking up with Kinukaz. <laughs> so I was trying to find any place to stick it in once it, that's, that came out the wrong <laughs> No, 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 keep going, girl. That's good. <laughs> But any place that I could stick in an, an alien line, I would do it. So, Did you have to buy special purple sheets to sleep on your bed? Oh, my. So, you know, getting it on is, uh, although it takes hours to get it on, the stuff does not come off with just soap and water. So I needed some special stuff to, they break it down with something called telesis, I believe it's called, and it's extra strength adhesive remover. (laughs) So after the first three days of taking it out, taking it off with that, the next time I put it on my skin, it was like fire. Like my skin was like, no, I don't like this anymore. (laughs) So they had to find something else. So I pretty much would, would like bathe myself in coconut oil and baby oil to get this stuff off because it needed something oil based to break it down. So I would shower on set and I would go home and shower again. And yeah, my sheets were we're always purple. I'm still, we, we, I wrapped on June 
12th and I'm still finding purple in very strategic places. So. <laughs> That's what Jamie said, that, <laughs> just, uh, just, she, that she's still finding little white bits. Oh my she, goodness. She leaves little white pieces of Jamie everywhere when she sits yeah, down on things. For sure. For sure. I I've been, well, I many a time was in a Loblaws or some grocery store in Canada and you would see someone look at me strange and I, and I would just say, Oh, is there some purple? Yeah. Could you point to it for me? <laughs> you don't know. I tried. I promise you. I, I scrubbed it for hours and. You know, you just at some point you just say, hey, I'm just I'm going to be purple for a couple of weeks. It's all right. I would be fine with that, especially so, with the bathing in coconut oil. I'm I'm good with all of that. That's so fine. the paint doesn't come off easily. So I'm assuming there was not a lot of transfer between Stama and your dad. <laughs> there was a lot of lavender created. Lavender color. Hey, Bim, let's swap paint. And if you go back and pause on some of those scenes, you will see purple on Stama. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> on, on her, on her I, waist. I, I pause. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Shannon pauses with Stama all the time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I just, you know, uh, I, I'm a fan of Stama and the beads. You know, I, I believe that Kinsey should have been in the bath with the Costis. I do that, like her style. Maybe that give it a little bit of time and, you know, Kinsey and Stama could be in the bath. You never know. Kinsey and Stama will get closer. I think we're going to be besties. You know, you can tell our, our relationship is growing. As I'm as, voting for it. You know, <laughs> is it the type of relationship that Amanda and Stama have right now? Um, I don't know. You'll just have to watch. Okay. Amanda and Stama, they're having a little rough patch in their relationship. I will give you that. You know, Stama may like it rough. I mean, that may have been a turn on. Yeah, just killed your sister. It's okay. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's it's the as Yule says, it's the damn braid. It's, it's the, the damn the, braid. That was a great line. <laughs> it was an amazing line. It's the damn braid. <laughs> oh, I love her. It's just see, and that's the whole thing. I mean, a lot of them have these just sweet one-off lines. Uh, I mean, <laughs> you with the first uh, with the first uh, thing, you know, the kapow. You know, it, and uh, the rest of us were just like, oh. We God, that's awesome. I rewinded that so many it's times. It's so freaking funny. Just the delivery and the the ability to to work in the the humor in a big ass drama like yeah, like sure. like this. It's just it's just so well done. You guys hang with it really really well. Oh, awesome! I'm happy you're enjoying it. I I have to say, so we are you know sort of at that hump at episode six that aired yesterday, and strap on your seatbelt because. 7 through 13 is just the most amazingly wild ride you will ever get on. I'm looking forward to it. <sighs> oh, <sighs> makes me nervous. <laughs> no, we were talking swapping paint earlier. Have you ever just gone home full of paint and been like, hey, baby, you want to <laughs> hang with a purple chick? You know? I, it's so funny. I uh, so in Canada. I'm not Canadian. I'm I'm American, but in Canada, I rented a room from you know a stranger, pretty much, and we've now become besties. But she has a three year old son, who I showed him a picture of myself as Kinsey, and he has been afraid of me ever since. <laughs> <laughs> on our final day of filming, they came to set to bring me some cupcakes, and he just burst into tears and said, I don't want to see Kinsey. I don't want to see Kinsey. <laughs> Kinsey's <laughs> scary. Here's the teeth. I hate Kinsey. And every day, he was the sweetest thing. He would come and give me a hug, and he would say, no, Kinsey. I'd say, no, Kinsey. No, <laughs> Kinsey. I had to, I also had to take my prosthetic teeth home to practice with because there's some episodes I had to ADR because I sounded like Fulvetha the cat. <laughs> <laughs> and when I'm speaking Kinuk Oz, you can't tell, but in English, you're like, what, what the hell is what? that? <laughs> um, what does she say? She kind of speech. Does that sound <laughs> like me have a place on top of that? <laughs> so I brought the teeth home and put them on and had them on. the boy. Yeah, and yeah, it didn't go over so well with the sweet little three-year-old. <laughs> so he drew me a picture of Kinsey. It was all purple and with a line through it that said, I think he might 
have spelled it in Kinugaz. He's he's three, but it said no Kinsey. He translated for me. <laughs> <laughs> and he put them everywhere. And he would always, no Kinsey, no Kinsey in the car, no Kinsey in the bathroom, no Kinsey in the house. Got it, Miles, no Kinsey. Kinsey is welcome here at any point. Thank you. It's, we, we're, in, we're big kin- yeah, we're big Kinsey fans here. It's, uh, I mean, it, hey, they even have two little ones that you could use for food. Oh, See? Well, uh, there you go. Hey, we got a five and a two year old. Not for, they wouldn't be scared. Yeah, the five year old's like, why is her hair white? Daddy, is she going to eat that person? I'm like, yes, yes, she is. She goes, is that good? I'm like, I'm not sure yet. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. She walked in on last last, last week's episode. Yeah. Hey, your five year old watched Defiance? Oh, uh, she's a super sci fi nerd. The same with the rest <laughs> she of us. She watches it because she knows Jamie. When she yeah, she knows it. Jamie because Shannon's such a Jamie fan that, that our five year old hangs out with Shannon a lot. So she loves two things because Shannon loves two things. She loves the Bengals and she uh, loves yeah. Jamie. And, and Warehouse 13. So and we, Warehouse you know, 13. She sees Jamie on both of them. Yeah. So <laughs> she's, of course, she can recognize Jamie in all her guises as H.G. Wells, as Stama, even from Hustle. She goes, uh, that's, that's Jamie. Awesome. Well, so good. yeah, she and she's a big Star Wars Rebels fan. So she's yeah, that's our five. Training movies. her right on sci-fi. <laughs> Come on. There you go, perfect. Good stuff. Perfect. So Nicole, I've yeah. got a question for you. Uh, yes. you now you've had uh, such a wonderful scene with your Bem this time around, yes. and and you've mentioned that you know. By got- the way, his lips are like marshmallow clouds he has the soft conrad coats has the softest lips and all of defiance was he a trumpet player was he what a trumpet player a tr- i don't know you should ask yeah. i should ask trumpet players Do trumpet players have soft lips yes yeah. generally speaking yeah well there you go maybe he plays the trumpet or he just has sensual lips that, that yeah. somebody is very lucky to hang out with <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I was completely traumatized. Like, no, I cannot kiss him. He's my father. I will not <laughs> Oh, these are soft and luscious. Okay. <laughs> well, no, don't think of him as your father. Think of him as your daddy. My daddy. That's what I said. That's not on Twitter. <laughs> Who's your daddy? <laughs> Who's your daddy? So how many takes did you, you know, just have to do? We did two, and two was enough. I tried to get them to do five or six. <laughs> they, were like, they were like, we got it, Kenzie. I'm like, not done yet. And I said, Dude, would, would Omek kiss like this? We should try it another way. <laughs> they weren't going for it. Perhaps a little softer and on my neck. I think yes. that would work. <laughs> yes. No biting. So you have this whole pastime going on with your Bem. Do you think Kinsey has a love interest that is still on board a sleep pod on the tier zoo on the souls is that how it's pronounced the ship yes. you, yes. you can't well, even get the ship name no, right, I, I give up i just <laughs> the souls you have to you have to growl that r in the back of your throat what david uh j peterson said to me is that when pronounced properly your r should sound like a little baby lion's roar so so perfect that was awesome See, all i need is a tutor will you tutor me <laughs> so, yeah, so you I will tutor you. We will uh I will tweet words out every week and then every month we will chat and I will quiz you. But to the question of do I have a love interest? Yes, you saw my love interest. It was my father, Bam. All right. Well, I've had all those years on the ship, she's gotta have some kind of entertainment. Yeah, I mean I'm telling you. Not the sleeping ones. And they they mentioned that 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 basically he's the only one she's ever been around or had and i mean that's that's the whole that's her whole thing we've seen a whole other image now she was but a wee innocent virginal thing before her father came along <laughs> that is just so gross i can't even <laughs> laugh about it it's just it's disgusting i was disturbed yeah. I have to <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah but it's kind of sexy when you say it you know <laughs> <laughs> the the omek we're a little freaky just a bit i mean yeah. i'm fine with all that Whatever yeah. Kinsey's into, I'm fine with that. That, that works for me. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm good. So <laughs> if you had your way, if Nicole had her way, mm-hmm. how would Kinsey wind up this season? And we're not asking for predictions, but how would Kinsey like to end up this season? If I had my way, I'd eat them all. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's pretty straight and to the point. Kinsey's <laughs> hungry. 
<laughs> delicious castithon, the other white meat. You know, Erathian is like porky in texture and, and flavor. Uh, yeah. You know, the Liberatas are like a crunchy treat. They're like McNuggets. <laughs> yeah. Furry McNuggets. <laughs> Human makes for a nice dessert. I'd be fine with that. Yes. I'd be fine with that. <laughs> I'd eat them all. That needs to be on a shirt. Devouring pink meat is a pastime of her. So white, meat. I, yeah. <laughs> white meat. White meat. <laughs> the new white meat. No. Yeah. So, okay. So, if that's how Kinsey would go, and, and uh, what would you hope happens? I mean, obviously, you hope there's a fourth season and everything, but how? what, what do you hope for as you as an actor? What, what would you hope for? I want to see how Kinsey adapts to her new human. Uh, does Kinsey play well with others? Does love change Kinsey? You know, love other than her, her fatherly love. What, <laughs> what is a, a new love interest? How would that influence Kinsey? Does Kinsey like children? Hmm. Other Does, than snacking on them, you mean? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Cause she strikes you as half feral, you know, cause she's yeah, been she's, cooped up she in the ship. Defi she's definitely half feral. You know, Kinsey likes to sniff and lick and eat. She blew Pretty up much. the jail. Literally blew up the jail. I've had worse dates. I, seriously. I mean, if that was like licking, snarling, and then blowing up a jail. And growling. That's that's a pretty good first date as far as I'm concerned. You should I mean, not play with the animals in the zoo. It's all fun and games until you lose an eye. Until <laughs> you poke somebody. Yeah. With Kinsey, it's almost worth it, though. I, I don't know. It's just that it's that danger element in the in the like how she moves like a cat and how she's just just dangerous and and childlike at the same time it's and how pretty, they ripped the skin off doc Yule. yeah that's pretty cool <laughs> man i mean it, well, and it was you're obviously having fun playing her she survived <laughs> you know, <it's> a very <laughs> small and she, she admitted in this episode that hey it was all you know we're, they just think a little bit differently than we do and that it's all tough yeah she enjoyed it at the sound like she oh, took one for the old mac thank you okay <laughs> well she had to be held down and skinned alive but I'm threatened uh, you know set on but th she survived it well, i think kinsey and doc yule could be friends in the future i think she did it for the side braid <laughs> yes that <laughs> damn braid <laughs> <laughs> kinsey needs a new hairdo uh, that that's all i'm going to say kinsey needs a new hair uh, a new hair style well it's all like turbaned flat right <laughs> yeah so exactly. so what would Kinsey need? Like a white mohawk or I mean, how could you make her any cooler and badass than she's already is? What Kinsey could have a side braid, the, the braid of justice. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, Omec with a braid All of right, justice. So Kinsey, she right. needs a side braid of justice. She needs some bath beads. <laughs> yes. I'm here searching for Omec justice. I'm fighting for our Omec rights. And you know, you're stuck here for a while, it seems like your ship's not going anywhere, so it's time to adjust. Yes. Mm -hmm. Take over. Indulge in the local culture. Yes, for sure. I'm, uh, I'm, unlike I'm, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't remind me. He's been <laughs> indulging. <laughs> Swapping paint. Oh, I can't imagine, paint. you know, you're reading this and like you said, you're just like, oh, dude, this can't. Oh, oh, yeah. All right. Well, I mean, and, and now you're in the, you did it with Daddy in the bird's nest of love. So, I mean, and there's, the there's that. Love. That's totally what I call it. It looks like a gigantic <laughs> big bird nest. <laughs> it does. It is a it is a big nest actually. I'm seeing Stama and him. I'm like, what what are they in? Are they in? that's a that's a bird's nest. <laughs> They're in a bird's nest. Stama has gone from the bath to the bird's nest. <sighs> On the purple sheets. At least she won't transfer. <laughs> well, there, you, there you go. Much. Much, yeah. Now, you, you did mention that you were uh, running back from a museum. Are you active in the museum community? I am. Uh, I like to say some girls buy shoes. I buy art. I sort of grew up with art, so I'm, a, I'm an art fan. I have a friend who was in New York for uh, visiting New York for three months and did not go to one museum. <gasps> what? And her and her flight was today, and I said, "No, darn it, we are going to the MoMA." So I, I took her down to the MoMA, and I gave her the greatest hits tour, and made a mash, mad dash out of there to get here, so that I can come talk to you. <laughs> so you're a fan of modern art, or I am. Uh, I love uh, baroque art. I love pop art. I love uh, modern art. Yeah, I'm. I'm an art fan. 
So um, to you, since you spend half the year in New York, half the year in L.A. and the other half in Frozen Tundra, which, yeah. which, which scene has the better art scene for you? Is it L.A. or New York? Without a doubt, it's 100 percent New York. You know, we have some of the biggest world class collections and museums in the world. How do you top the MoMA and the Met? It's amazing. Um, outside of New York, my favorite museums are in Spain. I, I spend a lot of time in Madrid, and most of that time I spend in the Prado. So, well, I'm a, yeah, because why not? I'm a huge uh, Velasquez fan, so I go and visit my lover whenever I can. Mm. <laughs> So that's actually pretty, pretty cool. well rounded. I mean, that's you. You you got to be in sci fi. You've gotten yeah. to to be Kenzie. You got to hang with Tarantino because, of course, you did Django. Yes, yeah, uh, that was fun. Where you were licking another man. <laughs> yeah, where you were. I was going to say, we, there's pictures of you licking him too. You know? That's true. I. You know what? Maybe I've always been Kenzie. I just didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> You've always been the predator, just without paint. I think in that first episode, uh, one of our executive, our co-executive producer directed the episode. And when I sort of went in to give Nolan a proper lick, he thought, what was that? But I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody liked it. it just <laughs> so Grant was surprised? Um, yeah. Really? <laughs> she says, yeah, yeah, he was a little, he was Amazing. a little surprised. It's not often that someone licks you. <laughs> Come to the Sci-Fi Channel. They look people all the time. <laughs> say, you, you don't hang around Sci-Fi often, do you? <laughs> I, I have to say that Grant Bowler is the most generous, lovely actor that you could work with, and and I would tell you who the jerks are. He uh, he really sets the tone for the way things go on Defiance. You know, behind the scenes, he was just awesome to work with nicest guy on tv for sure so generous so available so down for everything he has your back just awesome to work with okay here's the question for you since you you and your your daddy there were the new ones for this season other than rom talk what kind of pranks were pulled on you three or did you pull any pranks on the new on the other crew members you know what? I was the absolute last person hired on the show. So I felt like a foreign exchange student, quite literally, <laughs> showing up at the first day of school. The prank that they pulled on me was, here are eight pages of alien dialogue. Go. <laughs> wow. That's the prank. This is mean, mean spirited. <laughs> and, I, and I thought, oh no, how am I going to do this? And then, of course, you get to, I remember my very first table read and I'm sitting there and, and, and Tony has this like huge, amazing speech in Castitan that he just rattles off like, Oh, like he's saying his name and, and birth date and address. Um, and I thought, okay, I, I have some work ahead of me. So my prank was studying. 10 hours a day, every day, all day. <laughs> well, that's and, a hell of a welcome. <laughs> yeah. Kind of mean spirited. Hope you got them back for it. Yeah. I, you know, uh, and Tony's so sweet. You know, the cast, we send out emails to each other and he's always recommending books and, you know, oh, I just read this fantastic book. And I'm thinking, when do you have time to read? I can barely learn my line. How do you have time to read a <laughs> well, book? Well, Tony, he's such an international jet setter that he probably has about two days every week that he has to nothing to do but to read on planes. I, you're very, you're very true. Very true. You know, I, I think Jamie at one time was talking about how, how she had to learn her language. She had to keep it in earphones, and she, that's how she would answer and respond to anybody who called on the phone. That's She'd speak in her <laughs> language. But that would freak me I'm out. Sure like, I'm sure like Tony, it took her a while. I did a bit of that. I, I literally walked through the streets of Toronto <laughs> speaking Kinukas whenever I could. I would answer when someone would ask me a question, I, because you need it to sound like you're saying something and no one speaks it <laughs> so i would call david peterson uh often to practice with him but you know sometimes at the checkout line i just say click and people look back at you like who's the crazy ladies <laughs> who's the crazy hot ladies <laughs> buying groceries crazy lady in the store with parts of 
purple paint on it. It's just and normal for children. Toronto. I and mean, if you on. said, huh, I was like, oh, look, it sounded like I was asking you a question. Good. My job, job done. <laughs> <laughs> Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. You practice that sentence whenever you'd like, Sean. Oh, y- yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. So it much was, so. It was, may I have Sha- some water? <sighs> Sean is actually worse than me. Sean has about 10 years of podcasts out there in which yeah. he mispronounces something just about every week. So. Yeah, pretty much. I used to do a, a Battlestar Galactica podcast yeah. way back in the day. And, you know, of course, you have like a whole range of people on on that show. And we would interview a bunch of them. And I would get, I would consistently, they used to just set me up and just let me introduce them half the time because I, they knew I'd get their name wrong. And uh, after after ten years of that, you just kind of start rolling with it. Yeah. You're just like, all right, I, <laughs> I, I so suck. You know? No one ever gets my name right, so it's all right. It's it's a nice conversation starter, Galicia. Galicia. And if you are a Battlestar Galactica fan, we have a little treat for you coming up in Defiance. <gasps> <laughs> Calm down. It's okay. Don't shake the table. <laughs> <laughs> that is what we call a Sean scream. So stay yeah. tuned. All so, all right. So, obviously, you have the the whole thing rolling with Defiance now. Is there anything else you've got, or anything else you want to plug uh, while we have you? I was going to say the most horrible joke. Um, I have a dirty mind. You said plug, and it just sent me on a. We wrong. do too. So go ahead. I it's, do. I love you. Believe me, we do too. <laughs> will you go prom with me? <laughs> we yes, I will go to prom with you. Um, but we must talk again later in the season. I can't say any. There's we have so many juicy topics to cover that we cannot cover yet because I can't give anything away. Oh, but no, yeah. I the only thing I have to plug is I am uh, <laughs> detoxing from defiance as much as i loved it i'm i'm in full most days you can find me on the sofa with the snack and a remote control <laughs> i am happily doing absolutely nothing i'm still dreaming about lines i, I, I <laughs> you got the psd right the, the- i i totally have i totally have post-traumatic stress disorder i've never worked so hard in my life i hope that everyone falls in love with kinsey um there's more to come and it's exciting and i'm i'm doing nothing i'm enjoying the episodes i'm live tweeting with fans and i'm just going to enjoy my work and do some travel that's it and when something new comes along i'll i will let you know well, we will totally, if you are into it, we will totally to it. hook up back it's with you awesome. later on in the season or after the season finishes or whenever you're available. Who doesn't want to chat with Sean Shannon and Stargate Pioneer? That's what I'm saying. As often as possible. Right. <laughs> Bring your friends. We'll be cool yeah. with it. <laughs> yeah. And I love your uh, Voices of Defiance logo. And I noticed there's a little bit of purple on Little Wolf's arm, but I want Kinsey's head, you know, photoshopped in there somewhere. Okay. You know okay. what? For you, I will totally redo our logo. It's time for an update. <laughs> <laughs> he promised me an update Ooh, for the logo at the beginning purple. of season three. And no, nothing. I even mentioned it before we started recording, recording this season. Nothing. All it takes is to call saying, hey, <laughs> You know, I want a little bit of Kinsey. Oh, I'm, I'm on it. I, you know, I will have it in about 15 minutes after we hang up. That's how I <laughs> seriously, I'm going to do it this afternoon. All it took is for her to ask. And if she wants a new logo, I will I do know, a new logo. I know, and I've been asking for, for a while. Yeah, so. screw you guys. I'll do it for her. <laughs> 16 years means nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say thank you. I should say Galicia. That's how you say thank you in Kinukaz. Galicia. Gal- perfect. There you go. There you go. <laughs> One Kinsey on the logo coming up. <laughs> yes, yes. By the, sh- by the time this show posts, we will. I will totally have done that. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you very much, Nicole. We appreciate your time. And thank you. Thank you. Let's do it again. Yeah. Yes. yes. Absolutely. You, you name the date and we'll be there. I say somewhere around episode nine, we should have another chat. Okay. We will have lots to talk about between now and then. Let's see. Last night was six, so episode nine. Okay. Yes. So, you know. So in three weeks. Shannon, you have an episode to watch from last night. Yeah, half of it. Yeah. Half an episode. Yes. It was good. It was a great episode. It you was. should watch it. Oh, it was and, and we will regroup in two or three episodes. 
Sounds good. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. I have a splash of purple between now and then. Mm. Yeah, I'll have to admit, I watched you coming around that corner, like in the full goddess thing, probably about 10 times last night. So, yeah, it was it, yeah, it was good for us. You have his attention now. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It's awesome. I will, I will speak to you guys next time. Okay. Bye-bye. Uh-huh. Thank you, Nicole. Totally look forward to it. Bye. Bye. Oh! <laughs> you can do that again. Oh. Your voice has to be raw for how many of those you've done today. Damn it, I love her. <laughs> She's amazing. Uh, amazing she, actress. She really is. And thank you, Nicole, for, you. for hanging out with us. Great and interview. You said such wonderful things. And uh, it's super easy to talk to. And she's a sci-fi geek, and I think that comes through a little bit. I mean, she's excited about the same things we're excited about. She's a fan. She's also a terribly, terribly talented actress, actor, however it's politically correct to say it. And I enjoy her work. I enjoyed her in Django. I I loved her in Defiance and still do. But damn, she is awesome to talk to. Uh, If they were filming a Tron, she should totally be in Tron. Like Tron 3. God, yeah. Nice outfits in Tron. I would love to put her in a gym like outfit and uh-huh. everything like that. I would totally get a poster of that on my wall. Now that we can't have Jim because Jim blew up, right? I know. Well, she's a Game of Thrones I, fan you know, too, so she could be in Game of Thrones. I like the bad girls, I think. You think? Imagine that. You like the bad girls. Because I'm just rolling through it. It's like Jim, <laughs> Kinsey, <laughs> Starbuck. <laughs> well, okay. Starbucks, good or bad, depends on what day. You All know. right, Starbuck outside a cockpit. Kinsey, okay. Okay. she could be good. We just haven't seen it yet. Kenzie is good. Kenzie is fabulous. In all sorts of ways. Yes, she is. Can't wait to see what she's talking about. She said we need to talk in three weeks, so there's going to be stuff happening in the next three weeks. I can't wait to see it. And yeah, she was an, it was enormously cool. She was incredibly generous with her time. And uh, uh, even though she says she's only, you know, like kicking back and, and she's like, I'm not working. I'm not doing anything. I, I understand, but still. You don't do what she does for a living without working out in the gym for like 12 hours a day. So she's not sitting on the couch the whole time. I guarantee you that. Yeah. Yeah. That, Eating potato chips. Yeah. That girl is literally amazing, brilliant, and flawless. So, yeah. We're not worthy. <laughs> We're not. Especially me. <laughs> yeah. Not worthy. Thank you very much, Nicole. We can't wait to talk to you again. It's going to be amazing. And... This is a special podcast. It's going to come out in the feed before our podcast for the week comes out. So the next podcast you hear will be season three, episode six, where the apples fell. We will have recorded that live by the time this comes out in front of our internet audience on Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Central on Sundays. You can catch us at com slash live and join our live chat in the chat wing chat. You can find all of our contact information at VoicesOfDefiance.com, including our voicemail line, 612-888-ARC1 or 612-888-2751. And because we didn't do the interview live, if you have any questions for Kinsey, for Nicole, go ahead and hit us up with the voicemail. We will play them for her when she comes back next time. Oh, yeah. She coming back. (laughs) So with that, thank you guys very much for listening. And we will catch you next time. Word, homies. Log. <laughs> I don't start the log. Log. <laughs> the log says this interview is good. <laughs> the log says this interview has amused me. You may go. <laughs> Bye. See you next week. Thanks for listening to Voices of Defiance. If you want to get in touch with us, you can catch us on Twitter at Voices O Defiance. Email us at feedback at voicesofdefiance.com. Go to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash voicesofdefiance. Swing by our website, www.voicesofdefiance.com. Or send us a voicemail on area code 612-888-ARC1. That's 612-888-2751. This podcast is not affiliated with Sci-Fi, the television show Defiance, or the Triumph video game Defiance. Music titled after The Apocalypse by Schnee Schnook and Rocket Easy by Sound Rogue can be found on Pond5.com. Catch you next time and watch out for those hellbugs. Yeah, I've been uh, streamlining a bit. I'm going to streamline my editing and 
I got a new laptop so I can be a little bit more mobile and not confined. So, okay. Yeah, it's all right. Kayla shamed me into doing post work. <gasps> post production. Oh, it was bad. You can't yeah. just grip well, it and rip we, it, huh? <laughs> she was, uh, we did my first podcast with her, right? And, uh, you know, we did the stuff and she's terribly interested in the whole process and everything. So she knows about the mixer and she knows about levels and mics and all that stuff. And we were listening to the playback of the audio and I was editing and she's like, Daddy, what's that noise? I'm like, oh, I said, it's background hiss. She goes, will people hear that instead of Kayla? I'm like, oh, well, kind of. Um, all right, here. Can we make that noise go away, Daddy? Well, yeah. You want to do a podcast with her. Uh-oh. She just wants to do it right. We, Dude, you sound like you're behind a wall and muffled. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm walking. Okay. I'm right here, though. Um, so, yeah. So, she's like, Daddy, can we fix that? How Do you know how to fix that? I'm like, yeah. All right, here. Let me show you about D-Hum and EQ. So, we did that. And then she goes, do you do this on, on your on your addiction podcast? And I'm like, no. She goes, Daddy, <laughs> don't, don't you think you should? <laughs> That's what I've been telling you for a year. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to. You know? I'm like, I'd edit it. That's enough, isn't it? And she goes, Daddy, I thought we were professionals. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> like okay, okay. You know what? Screw it. I, you know, I'll, I'll do it. I'll, do, screw, I'll just do it. She goes, okay, Daddy. So now I have to EQ and de-hum wholesome. <laughs> Yeah. I put out my first one yesterday where it was de hissed and de hummed and stuff. And thank you, I, Kayla. I'm like, ah, oh, for crying out loud. Did it sound better? Yes. Oh, I know how to do it. It's just I, I'm lazy. But yeah. So my I'm, daughter shamed me into it. That is so funny. <laughs> so yeah. But we did our first one. She's she's amazingly fluid on the mic for a five year old. What are you gonna call it? My daughter knows everything. Okay. Kayla knows better. Exactly. So that will should cover, you know, because she, she moves around, you know, and she she doesn't stay on a topic for very long. And you can't keep her focused for more than about 20 minutes. So, um, you know, so it'll be short and everything. I figure about 15, 18 minutes with bumps and music uh, or intro, outro, rather. Like bi-weekly, once a month, whenever? Uh, I don't know. It depends on when she's good to go. I mean, it definitely wouldn't be more than like a, once a week, but I'm guessing like a couple of months. I'm going to store a couple of them up before I launch it, probably four or five, and then uh, then kind of see how she goes and see if she gets tired of it or, you know, what she wants to do. But yeah, it, it was a lot of fun. She's she's good and she's uh, she's amazingly animated and she takes direction well. You know, like you got to stay on the mic, baby. Oh, sorry, daddy. Where was I? Let's pick this up again. And I'm like, holy really? crap. It's a monster. Oh my gosh. Has she watched you guys cast on Sundays? I, not that I know of. It's just because she, wow. she, I mean, she might be listening at the door with, with when we do this show because she's up, you know? Uh-huh. So, I mean, she could hear something. She knows like she, she watches like a hawk. So, I mean, I know she's picked up some of it, but some of it is just her. So, I don't know. She's, she's pretty amazing. It, it, I was very shocked. Hell, when I started casting, I was 28 <laughs> years old or whatever, and, and yeah. it was just, it was very foreign to me. Her, she just picks it up. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, it's pretty cool. Sean, you have to talk this time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Sean. And then yeah, 50 cast cast. And we have Sean. <laughs> hey. Hey. <laughs> Op makes fun of me for that. He goes, you got over that quick, didn't you? Now we can't shut you up. Yeah, um, I was just going to say that. What's up, homies? Oh, by the way, uh, my 20-year-old daughter, soon to be 21, will be changing over to do the voiceover on Voices of Defiance. Wow, right on. Yeah, she's like, well, my sister gets to do Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. Why Why can't I do one? I'm like, yeah, go ahead. You, I've got Voices of Defiance. You want that? Yeah. Log. Log. <laughs>